Victor Echo 4 Bravo Delta Echo here. Uh, I've got the case and everything removed from my uh, my TSA 30. Um, one of the uh, common symptoms with this radio when it starts to when the relays start to age is you get some uh, weird issues with um, uh, audio cutting out or uh, issues tuning. Um, the ALC doesn't read properly and different things in the meters don't read properly. There's two relays that are a uh, common issue uh, in this radio. I've got the first one here uh, replaced as you can see. Um, I've got the old one over here at my desk. That's the old relay that would normally be in that spot. The old Omron. This is an obsolete part. You can't get them anymore. Well, uh, sometimes you're lucky and you can find a, a new old stock on eBay or something like that. Um, but uh, there's a few people that have started manufacturing PCBs uh, with two separate relays attached to them and uh, they seem to work quite well. This one uh, I had won uh, auction on eBay for about $12. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're half decent at soldering it doesn't take too long to, to replace it. The other one um, that uh, causes issue um, and I originally thought it thought this this relay here would solve the problem but it hasn't um, is uh, this relay here next to the RF cage there's uh, it's underneath this little metal housing there's two screws one on either side that hold it in there you can see one uh, one screw hole right there the other one there I've already removed the screws and the little metal housing just comes off and underneath is uh, another Omron relay uh, there seems to be more of these floating around uh, than the uh, than the uh, small uh, package relay. Um, this guy here is kind of a sealed unit. Um, you probably could open it up if you really wanted to, but um, it's uh, more or less a sealed unit. But this guy here, and this one's uh, nice and easy, it just pops out the socket here. You can see on the end there's a couple little clips. So you can actually open this relay up. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to clean the contacts on this relay. I don't know if it'll let me zoom in on it. But there's a set of contacts on either side and I'm just going to clean them up a little bit and see if that uh, solves any of the issues I was having with um, with this relay. The, the symptom I'm currently having is that after, after key up, releasing the microphone key, uh, the audio comes back in, but it's uh, very weak. Um, so I'm going to see if this uh, cleaning up this relay here solves that problem. So as I mentioned, there's a couple clips on either side of the relay. So we've got one right here. And if you flip the relay over, there's another one on the other side. So what, what you do to open this guy up here is you just gently pry the outside... Uh, plastic housing and just kind of wiggle the base it's easy easy enough to grab it by the uh, by the pins here and just wiggle it a little bit until the clip releases from the outside plastic and repeat on the other side uh, I won't be able to show this on video because it's uh, kind of a two-hand procedure you're gonna wanna pry that uh, and, and it's it's not that difficult there's enough space there that you can kinda grab it with a fingernail um, but uh, yeah, it, it'll take two hands to do one. Uh, you'll need one hand to to work around the uh, the outer casing, and the uh, the other hand to kind to kind of rock and wiggle the uh, the base of the relay out of the housing. Um, I wouldn't recommend really jamming a screwdriver or anything in there, um, unless you're very careful. You see, the outside casing of this relay is uh, it's a fairly brittle plastic, so you don't want to crack these. Um, these clips otherwise the uh, when you go to reassemble the relay later you're gonna have to have issues keeping everything together so with the uh, casing pulled off the relay you now have a base with the inner components of the relay so what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna do anything invasive here on these contacts at all um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wire up the relay so that it uh, chatters back and forth and I'm just going to spray some uh, non-flammable uh, contact cleaner in there and just let it chatter back and forth a little bit and uh, hopefully clean up the contacts 
and I'm also going to check the spring tension at the top of the relay here because uh, it is not the uh, the issue that I'm not ha that I'm having with it is not when the relay is uh, energized and the contacts are drawn magnetically to the uh, uh, to the normally open position, closing it. It's uh, when the relay releases from the energized position and uh, goes to close the normally closed contacts. That's when I'm having the issue. So it very well could be that the spring is starting to lose tension as well. So I'll see. We'll take a look at the spring tension and see if there's anything I can do with that. So what I've done is I've got a capacitor wired up across the uh, across the coil. So we've got a 10 microfarad capacitor there. And I've just uh, wrap, wire, wrap the terminals around there. I don't solder them because if you do, uh, the relay probably won't seat itself back in the socket. Um, so I've got the capacitor leads wrapped around the, uh, the coil terminals. And then I've got another jumper wire uh, jumping one coil terminal over to the normally closed contact. And then I've put the positive lead onto the coil and the negative uh, through the con uh, through the normally closed contact. So what's going to happen is when I energize it, I turn on the power supply. Uh, it's going to energize the coil. The coil is going to draw the relay. It's going to open the contact, cut power to the coil. The capacitor is going to discharge through the coil and give it a little bit uh, a little bit of hang time opening, and it's going to just basically oscillate and cycle the contacts between between uh, their two stages, like so. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my contact cleaner and I'm going to spray down the contacts while it's cycling back and forth and it will hopefully clean up the contacts a little better. I did check the uh, spring tension and the tension on the spring seems to be alright. It doesn't seem like it's gotten really weak or anything. So uh, I'm sure it's mostly worn or uh, dirty contacts that are causing it. Um, so hopefully uh, cleaning these contacts out will give me a little bit a uh, little bit more time on this relay before it has to be replaced. Uh, it might even solve the problem completely, but uh, we'll see. So the key here is uh, non-flammable contact cleaner. Uh, don't use contact cleaner that has a lubricant in it as well because that can end up causing more issues because the lubricant is going to uh, coat the contacts. Uh, non-flammable because you don't want any sparking or anything later on um, causing uh, causing the relay to catch on fire when it's in operation so just always use a, a non-flammable contact cleaner uh, for cleaning this kind of stuff the flammable stuff uh, you could use for sockets and things like that that aren't going to be actuating or sparking but anything where you could possibly get sparking uh, avoid anything make sure you use a non-flammable contact cleaner so that's for that old truth for relays or motor brushes or any kind of switches or anything like that um, the flammable stuff can be used for sockets where once uh, where you're not going to be um, plugging something in and out under load uh, where the potential of causing a spark would happen um, just buy the non-flammable stuff. It, there's no real point in having anything that's flammable in your stock anyway. So I'm going to turn on the power supply. The relay is cycling. And just give it a healthy coating of uh, contact cleaner. Let it do its thing for a while. And then maybe give it another coat and go from there. So I've let it go for about a about a minute, constantly uh, just keeping the contacts wet with cleaner. And uh, let it go for a little bit longer, um, let it dry up and then maybe cycle them again a little bit and uh, close it back up and hopefully this solves the issue. So the only other thing I had to do was, uh, once it was all cleaned and uh, cycled through, I had to take and run a little bit of uh, paper towel between the contacts just to remove the crap that the contact uh, cleaner removed. Um, so you might have to do that too. And then uh, double check with an, old, with an ohm meter. I just clip uh, put a couple clip leads to the uh, normally closed contacts and then add applied power and cycled it a few times just to make sure that uh, it was cycling and uh, closing with uh, minimum resistance. 
So once everything's checked out and contacts are clean and they're cycling with minimum resistance, all you got to do is just pop it back into the case and then reinstall it back into the radio. And hopefully we'll get a little more serviceable life out of this relay before it has to be replaced. So since everything else is open, the other thing you'll just want to do is just visi visibly inspect the socket at the base here and just look for any corrosion on the uh, on the terminals and uh, the ones in this radio everything looks pretty clean uh, terminals on the relay are nice and clean too so um, just in case that uh, there's some corrosion in the socket there you've got it all disassembled you might as well clean it out if it needs to be cleaned run a little bit of contact cleaner in there and then just pull this, the relay in and out a few times to clean up the contacts but uh, these look very clean actually the entire inside of this radio looks very clean so I'll just reinstall the relay and then reinstall the shield. And there's a couple screws that need to be put back in there. And then reassemble the radio and we'll just uh, give it one final test to make sure that the, uh, the repair actually worked properly. And uh, if it hasn't, then uh, I guess it's time to order a relay. So with the uh, radio reconnected and uh, to the antenna, put back on its uh, little spot in the shelf uh, we're gonna go and test it out now um, so the symptom here is is that once the microphone is unkeyed the audio level would drop uh, because the relay contacts were dirty there's too much resistance on them um, so it would attenuate the the signal coming in from the antenna so and this is a problem that would uh, sometimes happen after the microphone was cycled a couple times or every time so we'll just give it a little test and there you have it the repair seemed to work um, how long it will last, I'm not sure. This uh, could just be a fluke for the fact that the relay has just been freshly cleaned and it, uh, the uh, issue could uh, rise its ugly head again in a couple days. But uh, for now it's working and uh, hopefully it'll uh, bring a little bit uh, more serviceable life out of this relay before it has to be repaired, uh, replaced entirely. Victor Echo 4, Bravo, Delta Echo, clear.